In this video, we're going to extend our knowledge on similar polygons. So up to this point, we've talked about dilations and how dilations create similar figures. So if you remember what a dilation does, it's going to enlarge or reduce a figure. So it's going to make the shape the same, meaning the angles will be the same, but the sides will not necessarily be equal. So the sides will instead be proportional. So that's what it means to be similar. So before we look further into this, let's talk about the symbol. So the similarity symbol. It's the tilde symbol. So it's basically the top of the congruence symbol. The congruence symbol has the tilde and then the equals. So the tilde stands for same shape. So when we talk about figures being similar, they have to have congruent corresponding angles and corresponding sides that are proportional or their corresponding sides are in the same ratio. So what that means is if one side's twice as big as the other um, from the first figure, well then all of the other corresponding sides will be twice as big as the um, original figure. And then the angles stay the same. So if we look at this first example, it says that these figures are similar to each other. That's what that symbol means. So that means all of their corresponding angles are congruent and their corresponding sides are proportional. So as soon as you see this, you really want to be thinking two things. Corresponding angles are congruent. And the second thing is corresponding sides are proportional. So for this example, it wants us to list out all of the corresponding pieces. So the corresponding angles that are congruent. So if I look up top here in my similarity statement, I can see the order of the letters. I can also look at the picture for which ones match up. So angle A is congruent to angle E. Angle B and angle F are congruent. Angle C and angle G. And lastly, again, comparing the order up top will help. D and H are in the same position. So those angles are all congruent. When it comes time to writing the pairs of proportional sides, well, remember what a proportion is, it's whenever two ratios are equal. And one way that we can write ratios is to write it as a fraction. So you can write ratios using the word two, you can use the colon symbol, but in this case, it's gonna be easier to represent if we use fractions as our way to write ratios because proportions or proportional means that the ratios are equal to each other. So you're gonna see fractions with equal signs between them that means that now we have a proportion. It's when the ratios are equal. So if I start with, let's say, figure one and figure two, when you write your proportions or your um, ratios into your proportion, you need to make sure that you're comparing um, consistently. So meaning if I'm going to take a side from figure one and compare it to figure two, I need to be consistent and do that same comparison for all of the other sides. Otherwise, if you wanted to go two to one, take a, a side from figure two and compare it to figure one, that's fine, but you have to make sure you follow through and be consistent when you compare all the other sides. So if I look at talking about the proportional sides, well, AB in the first figure is gonna correspond to EF in the second figure. So AB in comparison to EF, that ratio is going to be the same ratio as if I were to compare BC to FG because those are in the same position, which will also be in the same ratio as side DC compared to HG. And that'll also be in the same ratio as side AD to EH. So I took and I wrote my ratios, so all of the fractions represent the ratios of the sides, and because they're proportional, I can set those ratios equal. So that's what that means. So notice the sides are not equal, it's the ratios that are equal, which makes them proportional. 
So if we look at this next idea here, it's how can we use this now to start solving some problems? So we know that if the figures are similar, their angles are congruent and their sides are proportional. So how do we use this to find unknown pieces? So um, this first part's kind of just a repeat of what's up top the ratio between the lengths of the corresponding sides, so meaning the ratio of the sides is the same thing as the scale factor or the constant of proportionality. So you do kind of have to be careful because we've talked about scale factor when we're doing a dilation and that's the number that you're multiplying by. Um, a scale factor can also be written as a ratio. So just be careful that you don't just see scale factor and think, oh, I multiply by that. You have to kind of read it in the context of the problem. So just be aware of that. Um, a scale factor can be written as a ratio or it can be the actual number that you're multiplying each of the side lengths by. And then the next example here, we have a quadrilateral that has these four side lengths. So quadrilateral just has any four sides. Um, so we have 8, 10, 12, and 15. Find the lengths of the sides of a larger and similar quadrilateral. So I'm going to try to make this look similar. So I'll try to make it look like the same shape, but different size. And the constant of proportionality is 2 to 5. So what that means is the ratio of the sides is 2 to 5, um, which means that the small to the big one is 2 to 5. So the ratio between the small to the big, so this one's going to be my small figure to the big figure, is in a 2 to 5 ratio. And the reason why I knew to, it was that way is because the smaller number is the small uh, corresponds to the smaller figure and then the bigger number corresponds to the bigger figure. So the easiest way to go about finding our missing sides is to set up proportions. Since we know the ratio of the sides is 2 to 5 between the small and the big, we can use that to find, um, to set up our proportion. So let's say I put an x here in the same position as 8. What I could do is I can take the ratio of sides, which is 2 to 5, so small to big, and then take 8 from the small figure, which corresponds to x in the big figure, set up a proportion, cross-multiply, here's where all that cross-multiplication is coming into play, and solve, then you get your value. So that means that this is 20. I can repeat that for this next side. So again, the ratio of the sides is 2 to 5, which has to be the same for all four sides because it says that these figures are similar. So the ratios are the same. So if I take 2 to 5, that's my ratio, and I take 10 from the small figure, that's going to correspond to y in the large figure. Cross multiply. And we get y equals 25. So that's the process we're going through. So we can continue that process, but just for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and um, skip finding the other two sides. You can if you want, but I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next example. Um, keeping in mind, for example, three, though, if you would like, instead of setting up a proportion, if this is the ratio, you could figure out the scale factor which would end up, if you're going small to big, you would have to multiply by 5 over 2. So you could have just taken the 8 and multiplied by 5 over 2. Take the 10, multiply by 5 over 2. That still works, but it's, you're going to find it to be much easier to start using proportions for these. So that's why I chose the proportion way. So then the last one I want to talk about here is the fact that we have these two similar triangles. So this is a question that comes up on the Regents exam quite often. Um, RD is 4, and RO is 6, OH is 4. We're trying to find the length of CD, so I'm going to put an X on there. And what I'm going to look at here are which triangles are similar, because I don't want to just go right ahead and say 6 corresponds to this whole thing, 4 corresponds to this whole thing. I need to make sure I pay attention to what pieces match up. So 
if I look at the six, or if I look at um, triangle CHR, so that's this triangle, what I'm going to do now that I have my triangle labeled, I'm going to redraw that smaller triangle so that it's in the same position because C and O correspond. So that means that O should really be up top here where C is. So what I'm going to do is redraw that smaller triangle. So O is in the same position as C. H is in the same, posi same position as D. So D should end up down here. And then R is in the same position. So now when I take these labels, DR is down here at 4. OR is on this side is 6. So now when I go to set up my proportion, what sides correspond, well, you know that this side is going to be in the same position as the 10. Those are in corresponding positions. So the ratio of those sides have to be the same as the ratio between the 6 and this entire side here, which we know is going to be x plus 4. So the 6 corresponds to the x plus 4 because those are in the same position. So that means that the ratio between those two sides is going to be equal to the ratio between these two sides. So I can set a proportion up since the ratios are equal because the figures are similar and then cross multiply and solve. So if I look at setting up my proportion, I'm going to go ahead and start with the big triangle. So I'm going to start with the 10. That corresponds to the 4. And then the x plus 4 corresponds to the 6. You could have flipped these. I could have said 10, uh, or I could have started with the small triangle. 4 corresponds with 10, and then 6 over x plus 4. Same thing in the end wouldn't make a difference. What you do have to remember, though, is to put parentheses around that binomial when you multiply. So 4 times x plus 4 equals 60. Go ahead and distribute. So 4x plus 16 equals 60. Subtract the 16 from both sides. So we have 4x equals 44. And then divide, we get x equals 11. Look back at our picture, it says find the length of CD. Well, that is 11. So I'm just going to make sure I answer the question. So CD is equal to 11. So there is your answer. So in this case, we didn't actually know the ratio, but since our triangles were similar, we could go ahead and set up a proportion because all sides and uh, all corresponding sides and similar figures are proportional. So go ahead and do your check your understanding problems, and we will talk about those in class tomorrow.